please welcome Lisa Edelstein. <laughs> I gotta tell you, okay, so Lisa, there has been 200 projects between the both of us, <laughs> and I cannot believe we've never met. I know, it's so true, it's funny. I know. Because normally, like, what, just, what's so nice about our business is that you keep running into the same people. You keep people running into well, well, we've we've changed that. Okay, well, yeah. we've never met. I'm Sherry Shepard, nice oh to meet you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, it's funny, because I, I, I run into people who know me. Are you, yeah. like, constantly running into people who know you? Yeah, I can always tell what they know me from by how they approach me. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different... People approach me differently if they watch than if they watch... I, oh, I can't say any names. It's OK. It was a mistake. Oh my God. You're Sorry. all right. Sorry. Because we're actors, um, we're on strike. So I it's can right. tell, like, if it's more personal to them. Yes. Um, and, and it always makes me happy when people enjoy what we do. And I hope our strike ends soon so that we can get So you get can get back. Get back yeah. So we can see you on the things that we love. Yeah. I know, girl, when I walk out on the street, people recognize me. And they're like, Viola, Viola. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I get, Octavia. I get risotto. Oh, you get risotto? a certain show from a very <laughs> long time ago. I know. And then some people, they know Lisa. Right, yeah. You know, I did not know this about you, but then I saw some of your artwork. You are an amazing painter. Thank you. Thank you, you. Oh, my goodness. Like, what type of, what type of technique is this? It's watercolor. It's watercolor. Yeah. Do you, are these like individuals, like real individuals? Yeah, they're all old photos. That's actually uh, still from home movies. I have home movies for my family dating back to the 1950s. Really? So yeah, during the pandemic, I, we had a lot of time uh -huh. um, and I started to really give myself permission to expand my uh, our art practice and and it just got bigger and bigger. Like Some really... of them are very large. Okay, because during the pandemic, uh, yeah. you know, I ate. That was cathartic uh... for me. <laughs> Is this cathartic for you to do the watercolor? I started off by watching every apocalypse movie and zombie movie. That was done in a week. I'd watched all the movies. And then I did a, like three, 3,000 piece jigsaw puzzles, that was over. And then okay. I was like, this is not gonna work. And so then I really focused on my drawing and I started painting and... Okay, well, yeah. I wanna know if you was watching too many apocalypse zombie movies, cause this was the baby drowning <laughs> in the pool. What, what the heck? What's going on with the baby in the pool? Isn't water? That, that's what I love about the picture. Yeah. What is happening? What's Why happening? is there Ajax next to the? Yeah, what? What? <laughs> what apocalypse movie? What? what? You asked my mother. That's uh, actually was... that's actually me face down in the tub. <laughs> So we know I survived. Oh my gosh! Um, that... But it could be a woman showing her children how to how to call, do infanticide. The, it, like or, float, like yeah. just float. You know when yeah. you throw the baby in the pool? Yeah, just look, float. look, they they won't drown. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're all fine. Everybody's fine. My mother took care of me. But uh, yeah, I loved this photograph. I love images that evoke story yes. that you don't necessarily need to know who's in them. But absolutely, you, somehow they tell you a narrative that you you have questions about. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's been really fun. Well, this is because you're so artistic that in your late teens, you knew Andy Warhol. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So when you talk to him, what, what were y'all talking about, you and Andy Warhol? Uh, uh, I, the longest conversation I had with Andy was about Kindergarten Cop. About he, Kindergarten he was, Cop? Was, was Arnold fan. Schwarzenegger? He was a big fan. Really? He was a big fan. Oh, my gosh. So did he, did he had to run around going, it's not a tumor. I mean, <laughs> wow, you have a good memory. I do not remember the details of that movie. I just remember that conversation conversation because I was so excited to be hanging out with Andy and then that's what he wanted to talk about. Oh my gosh, I never knew that about him. But I, I love <laughs> always the stories about back in the day. Yeah. And back in the day, you were a club kid yeah. running around in the streets, girl. You would call Lisa Aww. E back then. <laughs> Your name was Lisa E. And even the New York Times declared you the queen of the night. That's my so girl. So you cute. talking about <laughs> and look at you, you look so you look so nicely sexy, conservative, but back you were in this, <laughs> when you were in those streets, how crazy was that life? Oh, it was so much fun. In I the, mean, back that the... world was filled with freaks and, and <laughs> artists, and I was so excited just to be around people who were living their lives in a really unique way and right. like out and proud and like just having a great time. I mean, it was, 
it was very exciting for a young person to be exposed to that kind of creativity. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think about it because I always looked that up on Google and read the stories about it. I yeah. was in a religion knocking on doors. I didn't get to oh, do nothing. Really? No, I didn't get to do oh, anything. Oh, that is fascinating. Oh, Did you have God. birthday parties or anything like no, that? No, no birthday parties. No I had a friend who grew up that way. Yeah. Well, if you still go to the club, I'll go with you. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, I've been to more clubs than anybody needs to in three lifetimes. Well, but I like that Lisa E and just, I don't know what I be. Just give me a name and I'll, I'll go with it. <laughs> I, you know, it, this is funny because my son Jeffrey just graduated high school. Yeah. Your son, your stepson, uh, he's your oldest, Ben. He just started college. Aww. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you, okay. Now let me tell you something. Jeffrey don't know anything about my past. <laughs> Does Ben know that you were Lisa E and you were a club kid? Does he try to relive that? Well, he he thinks that because I had that kind of life that he, well, in high school, he, he thought he could get away with more uh -huh. because of my history. But he doesn't understand is that, no, I know what you are up to. There you go. <laughs> and I will stop it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... You do yeah. know. You know, I want to, I don't get to, you know, talk about a lot of things. This is a strike exempt. Um, project and I'm very excited. It is a uh, little bird. Yeah. It is little bird play and it's an adoptive mom of an indigenous woman. Yes. This was very personal to you. Yes. So uh, my character Golda is a Holocaust survivor and in the 1960s she adopted an indigenous girl and I think in her mind she felt like she was going to adopt somebody who also lost her family. Um, because the adoption agencies were telling people that these were abandoned children. Mm. Um, it was actually something called the 60 Scoop, where the government had stolen about 50,000 children off the reservations. And it was a very racist idea uh, to just sort of funnel them out to white families. Right. Um, and uh, and it, there was a lot of abuse. There was a lot of terrible circumstances. The, the children were listed in a catalog. You could pick your child and no vetting. So it was really a disaster. And the, all this stuff is sort of being unearthed now. Right. Um, and a lot of those young children are now my age because yeah. um, they're born in the 60s. Uh, and so this, place t this story takes place in the 80s when my daughter cannot move another step forward until she discovers who her family is and right. where she's from. She was raised Jewish. Um, the government told everybody, change their names, don't talk about their past. She was five when she was abducted, so she, it's not like she didn't she have knows. memory. So there's a lot of denial that had to go into. So these children were confused about who they were. Um, a lot of damage was done. And so it's a really beautiful story about her reuniting with her family and what happens to her adoptive mother in that process was incredible. There was a lot of, I worked with almost an entirely indigenous cast and crew. Um, I got to be on, working on you a few reservations. Story. I got yes. to hear incredible stories, personal stories of people's experiences. Um, I felt really honored to right. be a part of the storytelling. And because the character was Jewish and she was raised Jewish, there was a lot of uh, cultural conversation happening, cultural yes. comparison, trauma comparison. You know, um, it's, it's just really, we can't change our future unless we know our history. Yeah. We have to Yes, yes. I mean, this is up in so many ways this right is now. A, And this is so relevant. Yeah. Lisa, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank right. you, thank you, thank you. Y'all, Little Bird premieres on PBS tonight at 9. And go to SherryShowTV.com to learn more about Lisa's art show in Los Angeles. I want the baby drowning one. We're going to have a good time. We're gonna have a good time